Hi, my name is Richard Hutton and welcome to the Exponential Fund, the place where you can learn how to invest and absolutely crush average market returns. Today I want to explain to you the inner workings of my strategy to really understand how I came up with it and the logic behind it. So let's get right into it. Basically, I invest long term in big companies that grow fast. Plain and simple. So let me dive deeper into why these three points specifically. Why long term? Well, basically, you can categorize investors who are short term or long term. It is possible to make money both ways. And probably most people start off trying to trade short term. And that is very hard. And that is where most fail. It is excruciatingly difficult to make money short term. And also, it's very competitive. Now, short term, the price of a stock is based on mob psychology, based on sentiment not really so much the fundamentals of a company. There are some big investment firms like Renaissance Technologies who actually have the best track record of any fund ever, way better than Warren Buffett, for example, right? So for 30, 40 years, they averaged almost 80% per year returns, right? It's insane. But the way they achieved that is by hiring literally hundreds of borderline geniuses, experts in mathematics, physics, astronomy, like all the hard sciences, giving them enormous amount of computing power, like literally supercomputers, vast amounts of money, and they would create these complicated algorithms and neural networks and AI to find subtle patterns in the market. So it obviously it is possible, but if you're just an individual at home with a laptop, that's your competition. So in the long term, the price of a company goes back to the fundamental value of the company, right? Based on its financial performance. Now, it turns out a great disruptive company follows a very predictable S-curve growth trajectory, right? So I'll put a picture right up on the screen. Yearly iPhone sales show perfectly this trend. In the first few years, you know, sales were very small, just starting off because it, it was a new technology. Then after a few years, people got to know the product, really realized like, wow, this is great. And sales absolutely exploded. And then when the market becomes saturated, so pretty much everybody who wants an iPhone got one, then the sales growth rate slows down, right? And this is very, very predictable. With a new technology, so for example, electric cars, the cost of the product goes down exponentially as production volume goes up, right? So with Teslas, the first Tesla car, the Roadster, just the battery uh, had the price of about $100,000. And more recently with the Model 3, which is a much higher volume car, the price of the battery is only about 7,000. Because of economies of scale, you know, the company optimized the technology, made it cheaper and so and so. So if a technology performs better than the old thing that is, but it's very expensive, it won't, won't really compete. But as price goes down, demand for it goes up exponentially. And the same thing happens if you Google, you know, Tesla yearly sales. It's the exact same thing, exponential growth as the cost going down. 
So, if we know that in the long term, the price of a stock goes back to its fundamental value, and we know that in a great disruptive company, at least the sales grow very predictably, then it is possible to make investments with an extremely high uh, chance of success. Right? And I'll get into risk a bit later, but that's the thing. Right? Short term, quite unpredictable based on mob psychology. In the long term, very predictable with great companies. Now, why do I invest in big companies? Why not medium companies? Why not small companies? Why not startups? Well, we know that out of 100 companies started today, 10 years from now, most of them will have gone bankrupt, like 80%, most of them, because it's very hard. In the next 10 years, most of the remaining companies have gone bankrupt because it's so hard. Out of the surviving companies, the absolute majority are teeny weeny companies like mom and pop shops. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm saying the business environment is brutally competitive. So out of the remaining companies, an extremely small fraction are large companies because it's so hard. So if I were to tell you about a company, a stock, and I wouldn't even give you the name, I would just say this company has a market cap of $600 billion, right? Just from this, what can you infer? Because we know it is so hard to grow a company, and this company reached an astonishingly high size, it probably means that a bunch of intelligent people work there, right? Like if a group of people achieved something that is very hard, they are probably very intelligent, right? It's a reasonable assumption. Cool. If I also told you that in the last five years, the rate of sales growth was about 50% per year, right? What can you infer from this? Well, these people are probably quite ambitious, right? So what do you think this group of intelligent, ambitious people will do in the future? <laughs> Continue to grow. I mean, that's their nature, obviously. So if you buy this stock, and let's say you wait five years, and in five years, the company triples its sales, is it likely that the stock will be higher? Yes, it's likely. Not guaranteed, it may not be higher, but it is likely. We are talking about probabilities here. We are trying to look at a few factors which can give us an edge, increase the probability of a good return, right? It is possible to invest successfully and only know this little about a company, that it's big and it's growing fast. Now, why is that? Why is it possible to invest like this and not even know the product that this company is selling, the industry they're in, the management of the company, the state of the economy, the interest rates, and a million other things? Well, think about it. If you want to analyze a company's fundamentals, so not just the, not the stock price, like the actual company, the amount of information about companies on the stock exchange is so enormous that for practical purposes, it's impossible to study everything. It would take you years. And if you actually studied a company for years to find out everything, it would be too late. Like this stock would have already gone to the moon. <laughs> right? So, 
Okay, you cannot study everything about a company. Well, if you can't study everything, then you must select what factors to look at. Okay, if you must select, then the next question is, how efficiently can you select what you look at? And I would go even beyond that. What is the minimum amount of information you need to give you an edge? That is how I came up with this framework. It's big, which means people working there are intelligent because it's very hard to become a big company. And such a big company doesn't go bankrupt overnight. Like, obviously what they're doing works and they're growing fast, right? So on that S curve, they're still in the middle part, in the fast growth phase, right? Which means it is likely that they still have room to grow, right? Cool. Now, this strategy, the exponential fund, is also diversified. In my portfolio, I have 20 companies. In fact, 20 of the biggest companies that have been growing their sales by over 25% per year for the last five years. So I only have 5% of my portfolio in any company, right? Because I know so little about a company, I wouldn't want to put all my money into just one company. Let's pick 20 of these great big companies. So even if something happens to one of the companies, in the worst case scenario, I lose 5% if that company goes bankrupt. Also, I do not use leverage at all. Leverage, it's like your broker giving you crack. It is a very powerful tool to be used with caution if you know what you're doing. Leverage is how people want to get rich quick. Leverage is how some rich people go broke, right? When you lose about, when you hear about a millionaire or billionaire who lost everything in the stock market, <laughs> they probably used leverage. So borrowed money from the broker, right? They bought more stock than they had in their account. So if you have a thousand dollars in your account and you borrow another thousand dollars and you buy a stock, the stock only has to go down 50% for you to lose everything right? because the returns are magnified two to one. Now, of course, you think, well, it only has to go up 50% for me to double my money. Yeah, you're playing with fire. But if you don't use leverage, if you only have $1,000 in your account and you only buy $1,000 worth of stock, the only way for you to lose everything is if that company went bankrupt. And because I only invest in giant companies, I mean, most of the companies in my portfolio are valued at tens of billions and hundreds of billions of dollars, plus I'm diversified, it is practically impossible to lose everything, right? So to recap, this strategy, the exponential fund, is low risk because I only invest in big companies, it is diversified, and I don't use any leverage. On the other hand, I do expect high returns because all of the companies that I invest in are still in the rapid growth phase. Plus, I do another tactic, which is called rebalancing. So I put 5% of my money in all of the 20 companies. And let's say a month passes and let's say one of the companies, Amazon, went up 10% and other stock, Facebook, went down 10%. Now, Amazon doesn't represent 5% of my portfolio anymore, but more, maybe 5.5%. And Facebook is not 5% of my portfolio, but less, maybe 4.5%. So what I do 
is I sell some Amazon to get it back down to 5%. And with that money, I buy some Facebook to get it up to 5%. Now, what do I achieve with this? I buy more of a stock when it's low, and then I sell some of it when it's high. Buy low, sell high. But without having to predict what the stock will do. That's the trick. This type of analysis is quite efficient. So there's a website, finviz.com, where you can look at the list of all the companies on the US stock exchange and sort them by market cap, by sales growth rate. That's where I find these companies. And I go there once a year to check on the list of top 20 companies. And if the list changed, then I change my portfolio as well, right? Maybe some companies slowed down their growth rate, so they dropped off the list, so I sell it. Maybe another company who was lower on the list, maybe on uh, rank 22, grew so fast that it got in the top 20. So I add that company, right? So once a year, I add or take away companies, and then during the year, I rebalance. Simple. This rebalancing is also how I get around the valuation problem. So Warren Buffett says invest in great companies at a fair price, right? So don't buy a company, even if it's a great company, if it's overvalued. But the problem is to correctly evaluate the company, you would have to know the profits that they'll make in the future and then calculate backwards what it's worth today. The problem is with these super fast growing companies, it is very hard to predict the profits that they will make in five or 10 years because even a small change in current assumptions massively changes the outcome. And so many times, even great investors looked at a company, which was a great company growing fast in a expanding industry, and they didn't invest because it seemed overvalued, like Amazon, for example, right? But the secret is um, great innovative companies seem overvalued all the way up, right? <clears throat> so if one of these 20 companies is actually overvalued, well, it would crash, right? And what would happen if it crashed? I would buy more, <laughs> right? So it evens it out. One more thing on volatility and risk. In the finance industry, it is commonly believed as a definition that risk means volatility. If a stock is very volatile, it means it's risky. I disagree. Think about it. If you were to invest in a company which has multiple major competitive advantages, right, it would it's so far ahead of the competition that it has no competition. It means it is very likely that five years from now, 10 years from now, the company will have significantly higher sales and profits, right? Cool. So we can assume that this investment is safe because it is a high likelihood you will make money. Cool. Now, what if in the next 10 years, on its way up, the stock fluctuates a lot? What does that have to do with the fundamental competitive advantages of the company? It does not. Because in the short term, the price of a stock is based on mob psychology, based on sentiment, and people are largely different, driven by emotions. Right? When a news comes out, and people react, they often react in an exaggerated fashion, 
the stock goes up too much, goes down too much. So like up, down, up, down. But on average, it's up, right? So one downside of the strategy is that it is volatile, right? If the market crashes, the value of this portfolio will also crash. I do not try to predict the next crash. I think that's foolish. I stay invested in these phenomenal companies. And in the long term, the fundamental value of these companies will even out the stock price, right? Now, how come I just give away my strategy freely, publicly? If I tell people my strategy, won't they copy it and then it will stop working? No. If it's so simple, won't just everybody do it? No. These 20 companies have a combined market cap of over six trillion dollars. Okay. If I went on national television and I told everyone and people, you know, actually did this, copied me, a million people couldn't each invest a million dollars with a strategy and it would still work, right? Because the market is so enormous and many people are quite stubborn. So it's not like they easily change when you give them a suggestion. We're safe. Now, here's an invitation. I am using the strategy. It is working very nicely. It is robust, low risk, and has the potential to give returns of 20 to 30% per year on average. So about a 10x in 10 years. I have achieved financial freedom quite early at just the age of 25. And I want to help people do the same, you know, become financially free. I have found a way to invest other people's money, so to speak. With the broker eToro, I made an account, I applied, I invested this way. And if you like my strategy, you can make an account and actually there's a button to copy me. Like if you click this button, automatically all my investments are copied in your portfolio for no fee. You're not paying any fee. You are exactly just getting the investments that I'm doing, right? And I actually do get paid directly by eToro one to 2% of the sum you're copying me, right? So. This is not financial advice. I am just saying that this option is available, right? This is my business plan, so to speak, right? This is what I'm, why I'm making all these invest, all these videos. I want to share my thought process, my strategy. And if people like it and want to copy me, they can do so. I will put the link down in the description if you want. And that's about it for today. So thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, take care.